All right, so we got this response from Steve Mansour, and he has said that uh, our, our uh, request from the library has been satisfied. He says that we have, he's answered all, this question, all our questions about uh, communication that involves uh, my name, uh, with the library back in 2022, except he's withholding uh, one email that he he himself has determined is protected from disclosure under the provision of Louisiana Articulated Response Sequence 4441C, and so that this is just a public records request. So, he, um, he's one level. Then the next step is to subpoena, because I still have an active case. So I would subpoena that information and, and bring it before a judge to decide. Because, you know, it's, it's uh, as a part of the uh, routine um, to uh, make a public records request first. And then, and then, uh, if they don't comply, then make it a subpoena issue uh, that goes before a judge, who, who sometimes, like Judge Housley, will also deny. And that's interesting. So then, I guess um, maybe you could uh, appeal that to uh, the the higher court and ask them to uh, decide if the uh, city judge also agrees with the lawyer not to disclose under certain provisions. So I guess there's a, there's a few layers just on getting evidence alone through the, the different layers. I guess the first thing you could do is just simply ask them, walk up to them and ask them for all that information. And then if they say no, then... Then you uh, do a public records request officially in writing, and then, then after that you you do this subpoena, and then, and then the appeals process after that, appealing to I don't know how high you could go. I don't think the U.S. Supreme Court hears that. All right, that's the response, and now the actual information. Once again, we see Stephen Mansour. But the date is way back in 2022. And uh, I, I guess I asked, I would have to look, because I see my email on here. I'd have to look at uh, my old emails uh, on March 25th, 2022, to see his response to me. I don't recall, I don't recall the details. That was over two years ago now. But he's still he's still working because he responded to my, my my lawyer not too long ago, Stephen Mansour, a civil division uh, prosecutor. So let's see, this is his response two years ago. Let's see, Rickers' request indicates uh, I presented in person. However, the request was not presented in person. This guy is kind of an idiot but rather as an attachment. So I don't know why he's saying this. He also says, please be advised, I have complied information responsive. That doesn't make any sense. This guy doesn't know English. In order to respond to the appropriate recipient, please provide my office with verification. Where's his office? 200 Church Street, room 208. Hmm. And, okay, in order to respond, please provide my office with verification of your identity and age. Okay, and he doesn't say it, that's under a certain law. And age. That's a weird request. And I, I don't recall responding to it. I just kind of, maybe I just saw the denial. So he, he, uh, he denies me my public records request based on my name and age. All right, in Louisiana, they're idiots. Uh, all right, and then, uh, well, this information is maybe what he was holding on to 
ready to provide me, but you never follow through because I didn't provide my name and age. All right, so these are from 2022. All right, so I don't know if they're exactly in chronological. We got March 28th, 2022, and it's Steve Mansour again. Billy Joe Harrington, the the head district attorney who was elected. Something uh, with Valley Washington, Valerie Washington. Okay, let's see. All right, so please find the attached FOIA request uh, documents from the library schedule with added staff positions. <clears throat> and this is 2022. Did I request this stuff? So long ago. Emails from the SOS office with approval to dispose of the security cam footage. Email communication with redactions from library accounts relating to the persons in question. <clears throat> and a policy manual. I know I wanted to see some policies. I never have seen the library policies. The, the police policies have been like 75% redacted. Let's see, Natchitoches Parish Library. Okay, so on, this, on the day I was arrested, we could see that there was more than just Carlo and Rosalind working uh, at about, what time, 12? I forget the time I was arrested. We have Emily, she was on in the children's, Francis, the library technical assistant, I think this is that black guy, Francis, oh he takes a lunch, okay. Let's see, uh, 12.30, Emily and Roz, okay, and uh, Francis and Carlo, oh, they're supposed to be on lunch. Okay, we're talking about it's only, what, three or four people on, uh, on the clock at the time I was arrested. Um, so that's, that's the schedule then. All right, <clears throat> let's see, we got... In this email, and this is heavily, that was heavily redacted. Let's see, there's, there were redactions already, right? No? Okay, there's no redactions yet. The redactions get pretty ridiculous. Alright, and obvious. Okay, so these, this isn't redacted. Oh, wait, it is redacted. So you could see the white line before the rote. Jessica, and then there's this big, and then what they did is they put a black mark, and then they erased the black mark, and so it's something Jessica, which I think Jessica is, oh yeah, and then also Jessica's uh, <clears throat> email is, is redacted at the top too, but I mean, you see her, her email, see, they don't, they don't redact very consistently, because Jessica's email is, yeah, right there on the top of this one so this is one that didn't get it redacted they only redact certain ones so you piece things together you can kind of get an idea of what they redacted it's still ridiculous so all that's a space between Jessica and Natchitoches Parish Library I think was redacted you could see the white dots but let's see what what happened all right, from Bailey. Bailey wasted no time to wait that 30 days. Well, no, she didn't even wait 30 days. 30 days prior. See, ba Bailey wasted no time to, to uh, delete the library video of um, me walking around. All right. And I know I requested it. I requested it right away, like the next, well, right after, on the day after I got let out of, out of jail. And I asked only through the prosecutor's office, and I'm learning more and more that if you ask directly from the prosecutor, you're not going to, you're not going to get all that you're looking for. You're not going to get that library video. You're not going to get the police policies, police discipline records. You're not going to get a lot of things because they don't care. They don't. They don't. Uh, they they claim not to deal with that. I learned that in Kentucky that the the prosecutor doesn't want to deal with police policies, police records, 
um, they just want to know that the policeman's still employed, that's it. So you have to go directly to the policeman to get their information. You don't go through the prosecutor. And it was interesting to me in Williston, North Dakota, the prosecutor wanted everything to go through her. And I'm finding in the South that not everything goes to the prosecutor. You got to go through the other other branches of government. So did I did I ask fast enough for the library video? It appears that I did not. And 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 they just they buried, they deleted that library video 8 days after I was arrested. Cuz this was this says approved right there. Approved thanks from the request of permission to delete videos from 30 days prior to February 1. And that was the time of, of my arrest. So they didn't want to have that to be hung over them. So that's destruction of evidence. I mean, obvious. They were well aware of it. They've made it very clear that they are well aware of my arrest in the library. And yet, here they are deleting the video, knowing full well on march 2nd oh wait yeah on march 2nd knowing full well because these emails show that they've been communicating and who reproves of it jessica jessica's has been the head part of of this well along with everybody else the cops the prosecutor the judge see Rosalind, she gives her statement but this is different um about um my my interaction at the library. Let's see, 12. Let's see, um, to Jessica. Somebody, redaction entered the library's rear entrance on 12 at 122.22. Emily greeted him from the info. See, she wouldn't say this in her statement. Emily greeted him because she was, she, that, this is probably uh, Rosalind's first statement that she made, and then the cops come in. And, and make her rewrite it, okay? This would have been her, uh, Rosalind's more, um, ac um, um, let's say, authentic uh, uh, statement. It's just her simple email to Jessica, the head librarian. Emily greeted him, because she did not say this. Emily greeted him from the info desk, and he did not acknowledge her. He walked up to the stairs to the second floor, when arriving on the second floor, I made eye contact with him and said, Hi, how are you? He did not acknowledge me either. He started looking around like he was lost. He was t walked back towards the stairway and looked up the stairs, but did not try and go up. <clears throat> I then asked him if I could help him with anything. He responded, exactly what it is you want to help with. He proceeded to look around the library like he was trying to check all the exits. He then walked up to the third floor and came back down when he realized the door was locked. He walked to the magazine area and started pulling things out of his backpack, but he kept looking back to see if we were watching him. I called the police to have them come through just to check things out. When they were talking to him, he refused to give them his name and he would not cooperate with them, so they arrested him. See, this is a more accurate statement from Roslyn who was uh, who testified against me in my trial trial number one all right and then this is this is weird guy arrested at main backlash from Michael and clearly redacted his email hello so Saturday some guy got arrested at the main branch he had a youtuber channel and now his fans are calling and harassing the library. We have received a number of these calls at the Camp G branch. So if you pick up the phone and it's about somebody named Redacted and their illegal arrest, that is is what it is about. And that's Michael. All right, I was permanently... For a lifetime banned from Camp D Library as well. Simply because people were calling over there, I guess. Because maybe Camp D branch is easier to reach than the Natchitoches branch. So I got associated with uh, 
some wrongdoings over there and lifetime ban. Let's see, Jessica wrote to a redaction. You cannot see who that is. You can see that they they black marked it out and then white spaced it out after that. And then you just got this a little box mess there. And then some kind of right around uh, around the Jessica name. They're they're just making notes and marks all over. And then in the two, Jessica wrote to uh, several people that uh, they redacted the full two lines of, of redactions on who she wrote to. It's probably the prosecutor. <clears throat> it probably says Cloyd Benjamin in there. On Saturday, an unidentified man, and probably um, Judge Owsley too. <laughs> Cloyd Benjamin... Uh, Robert Owsley, I have no, I, no doubt those guys' names are in there. On Saturday, an unidentified man entered the library and was acting suspicious, had a large backpack checking exits, walking up and down the stairs, <laughs> making staff feel uncomfortable. One staff member, see, it's just not talking about, all right, whatever. One staff member working that day asked him if he could help him with anything, and he responded very aggressively, what do you think you can help me with? This frightened her enough that she called the police and asked them to come and check out the situation, which they did. Police arrived and approached the man, asking him his name. He would not give them his name. After a few minutes of going back and forth, a few seconds, about why they were questioning him, they repeatedly asked his name. He still would not give them his name, so they proceeded to arrest him. After his arrest, the police determined his name was redacted. We found that he was a YouTuber from the North who travels across the country and acts suspicious in an attempt to interact with police. He has been arrested more than once during th these interactions. He was in jail until today. Upon his release, he came to the library to upload his newest videos of him being arrested in the library. How ironic. His followers have spent the better part of today continuously calling, harassing library staff, 9-11, the police, the city hall. We're exhausted. If you want to see the videos, just search his name on YouTube. And then there's redactions clearly there. Just wanted to give you a heads up. That's all of this was going on. And then uh, she's got a redaction under Natchitoches. For some reason, maybe that's her her email. All right, and that's Jessica. She sent it uh, three days uh, after I was arrested. I was released three days later. It should be more like four days. I stayed an extra day. Let's see. We got something written from redacted to redacted CC redacted. So this is. I mean, how do they even associate my name with this? How do they even know a library is associated with this email? I went to my desk in the back to get my tablet to make notes for the day. And I was approaching the... Oh, I know who this is. This is that the male, the black male, approaching the tech. And he should have been called. See, he got, he got uh, like, I mean, he got protected, all right, from my first trial. He should have been, he should have been called. <clears throat> I was approaching the tech processing door, which was open, and the person of interest, redacted for two lines, entered the library with a black duffel bag on his back. He came by information desk and stopped and looked around to see the surrounding. Then he approached tech processing door towards me about ten feet. I stopped before he could enter the door, and he stopped and looked around the area again. I started walking to the door, and he turned and went towards the elevator. He then went upstairs and the event started that's on record. I went to children's desk for the day. The police showed up shortly afterward with two males officers and one female officer. The man was escorted to the police car with his belongings and his empty and his and he and he was emptying his pockets at the driver's back side of the police car and the wind started blowing it across the roof of the police car. He was then put in the back of the police car, and one male officer and the female officer left the parking lot with the person. The other male officer came back inside and went up to the second floor. 
Well, yeah, obviously that was that was Miller. And they they have they have a room where they just hang out all day. <clears throat> so maybe Miller was Miller just happened to be going to the second floor anyway and happened upon this incident. All right, let's see, fan on February 26th, so this is a, a month and four days after the arrest. Subject fan from redacted to redacted, and the, the two is to several, a whole line of redaction there. Hey, a guy came in Saturday and wanted to talk about redacted <clears throat> and wanted to go upstairs to meet him and visit. <clears throat> so it sounds like uh, somebody in the children's desk area uh, visited because going upstairs would be where I, where I was children's is in the lower floor of this this old bank <clears throat> he talked to me for several minutes and seemed to be looking for a reaction but I didn't give one not sure if he was recording just wanted to let you all know have a good week Bridget all right so look at this from is redacted but she puts her name Bridget so from is clearly from Bridget, yet the stupid person who does redactions doesn't read. They have no, and, and we, we can pretty much guess who that person is. It's, it's obviously the dummy uh, Stephen Masseur. He has no problem showing his email, because if it was somebody else, they would have uh, redacted that. So Stephen Mansour likely was a redaction guy. He, I mean, he told um, my lawyer that he he, re, he uh, removed one email, so, in, in out of protection for something. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, this this whole thing is stupid, and it's just it's like it's just a it's a swamp of stupidity uh, from with everyone here, and I'm still dealing with this. This is really frustrating. But this, I mean, this is more information about my arrest.